Hello, welcome to my garden and yard. So these are, this is bird seed that has grown in my yard and produced its own crop. So the birds will have fun eating that. And then all comes from this. Just, it's these little, these larger brown seeds falling out. Um, the birds knock them on the ground and then it grows. So that is my little all natural spot for the birds to eat. There's some back here too. <clears throat> and the bird seed just grows in the bin. You can see they make a mess in the water bowl down there too. And this seed feeder is always empty in the morning. So I think there's some night critters that come and empty out. And the dogs are good at chasing the squirrels along the fence. Um, this is my grape trellis and the grapevine has just recently come out of hibernation so it's not grown you know full fledged yet and when I trimmed it last winter I didn't pull away all of the trimmings so this branch is no longer attached to it but it's still hanging on so that the new growth has a place to, to anchor like in there. So this is a piece that's already cut off but it gives it an anchor for the new growth to kind of hold on to. <clears throat> and if I get really close, you can see the baby grapes grown in there. Little baby grapes. Now this kind of grape does not do um, really thick clusters. It's more of like a widespread cluster. But that will be the grapevine. <clears throat> then over here in the garden, which is a mess. <clears throat> Again, this is amateur gardening, not, not like professional. I threw in mulch bags with mulch in it still without opening the bags to try to keep the weed suppression out. So it looks kind of tacky, but it did help last week year. And so in here now, this is a, a tomato. I'm trying to think of what kind exactly it is beefsteak, beefsteak tomato plant. This is a cherry tomato plant. That is another beefsteak cherry plant. That would be my dog eating the grass through the window. Um, on the ground here, really close up, these are peas that are just starting to come up. And this is some corn. So we've got corn sporadically throughout. I just threw seeds in this year. This is a weed. We're gonna pull that up. These are gonna be either melons, cucumbers or squash. I have some potatoes. Now this was just a sack of potatoes from the grocery store that was growing on my counter because I hadn't used them quick enough. Um, so I went ahead and planted them in the ground. I did plant some um, and put them in the windowsill in the winter and they grew really long and lanky because they didn't have enough sunlight. So that's what this is kind of struggling and you can see there's a potato <laughs> sticking up here. When potatoes grow above the ground like this, they will turn green and oxidize or something, if that's the scientific word for it, and they will be poisonous. So do not eat anything that comes up out of the ground like that that's um, showing off. We are going to plant it a little bit deeper and let it grow into another potato. Um, these are carrots left over from last year. Didn't harvest all the carrots, and so they have grown big and stocky, and you can see that the bugs have been kind of eaten at the roots there, at the carrot. But this will produce some seed this year, and we'll be able to pull out the seed and um, sprinkle it in and have some good carrots next year. And we've got weeds growing into it too, so I'm trying to pick those out while I'm talking to you. Now this carrot looks like it probably um, was from a seed. Um, so it's fairly new. And then sticking through, again, lots of weeds. This is a pepper plant. Um, it's gonna be banana peppers. You can see it's already got some flowers on it. So those will pollinate and turn into banana peppers. Now this is a jerry-rigged device. I basically took a spinning, um, what do they call them? Water flinger whatever that would be, um, sprinkler, sprinkler. And I zip tied it onto one of the potato, tr tomato trellises. 
and then I weighted the trellis down with some bricks so it doesn't go off. This basically is going to water all the plants without running into the stems and not dispersing the water evenly. So basically just elevated so that it doesn't um, not spray some areas. Under my apple tree, so here's my apple tree in all of its apples. It's kind of hard to see the whole thing because of the, the way the sun is shining and I am looking into the sun if I point this direction like this. So I'll go on the other side and show it to you from the other direction. But these are really, really good um, year for it. The frost usually kills off the first set of blooms. And this year it did not. So all the blooms were able to survive to fruit. And I think if this was a apple tree farm or something, when they cluster and come out like five or six apples like this, they usually thin them out to one or two. But I have enough apples falling from the tree during storms that I don't want to do that because then I'd lose a lot more of my crop. So you can see all the baby apples that have fallen off the tree so far in the, in the spring storms we've had. And then under here we have, this is an old um, blackberry bush from the previous year. And it has uh, flowered and produced blackberry fruit. And these will ripen up and uh, be great um, to make some blackberry jam as well as to eat by themselves. I did have one that came up ripe that I ate this morning when I was checking the garden. And next to that is this year's growth. So this year it's, I mean, we had a really good wet spring. So it's come up, it was, would have been taller than this, but I picked off the top. And now it's putting out s several shoots out the side. Just by picking off the top, it actually helps grow these shoots and that gets you more berries in the long run. And the apple tree has got so heavy with its fruit that it's hanging down into the berry bushes. So we have apple trees right there and then berries right there. And then under the apple tree, I always have asparagus planted. So these long blinky things here, those are the asparagus shoots. They come out of the ground here. And I'll show you from the other side, kind of uh, the larger ones. There's even one little lone apple hanging in right there. Okay, and then this is just a messy part of the garden. This is the back side of all the berries. Um, we're gonna go around the other side. Now look right here, we have some babies coming up. I'm pretty sure that those are gonna be dandelions, not dandelions, marigolds, marigolds. That I just threw the seeds in again. So little marigold flowers coming up. My allergies are acting up here. Okay, out of the gate. And the gate and the fence are there to keep the dogs from eating my plants. All right, so this is the berry section along here. It's supposed to be along that fence over there, but um, they pop up wherever they want to. So last year they popped up along this fence instead. So I left them here because I would like to have some berries. So you can see that there are different stages of green and red. And then this would be, you know, next year's growth right here. And I did cover everything with a bird net. So bird net covering everything. It doesn't go all the way around though, so I'm sure there's gonna be some birds sneaking in. That is next year's growth on that one. Next year popping out over here, here, here. Here's last year's with the berries on it. And there was one really dark berry along that. Oh, oh here it is, okay. Again, there's lots of weeds in here because I haven't mowed behind this fence. Um, this is getting near ripe. So it's doing really good. Now, ah, ah, you do not get to eat that. And that's the reason that this fence is up. This black temporary fence here is to keep the dogs from eating the berries. So netting for the birds, fence for the dogs. And again, I haven't mowed behind that fence since I put it up. So the grass and the weeds are growing up. Now this is, this is where the berries are supposed to be. And that's the trellis that's supposed to be standing right here to put across. But since the berries didn't grow there, the trellis is just kind of just taking a vacation. Um, again, this will be next year's growth, and then that was last year's, uh, so all the berries are on last year's. And there's one really big tall weed in here. Get the weeds out of the garden! Rip it down while we're talking. Okay, weed be gone. And the netting does not extend all the way to the ground. 
like over here it stops right there so i'm sure the birds are going to just hop on the fence here and then hop in and eat some berries but i'm okay with that and then berries here and because the tree provides a lot of shade there's not too many berries along this area um, but they are in the tree i'm going to back up as much as i can you can see the whole apple tree here So, and those apples that are higher up, I do have a, a apple pole to be able to harvest them when the time comes. Okay, asparagus shoots. Here are the asparagus shoots that I was talking about from the other side. These are the larger, fatter ones. You can see that when they start coming out of the ground in the spring, that is when we harvest. And then after the harvest, we let the rest of them go and they, keep the plant alive, um, nurture it all year long, and provides the nutrients for harvesting next year. And you can see the brown one, that is one from last year that I did not pull out um, because they die off in, this, in the winter, just kind of like a yard grass does. And then they come back up in the spring and that's when you pick them. So I did not harvest any asparagus this year. And so they all grew into nice long stalks and they'll um, provide the nutrients so that next year's crop is even better. So we'll look forward to some good asparagus next February-ish, February, March. And that kind of concludes the garden and what's going on with it. And you can see this is the size of the baby apples right now. <clears throat> You're doing good. shade off of there.